Good afternoon folks, uh, welcome to this afternoon's live stream. Uh, today we are looking at the color editor of the basic and advanced tab, more on that in a second. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome to you. Um, if, oh, let's just turn that other camera on in case we need it. Um, welcome to those of you on YouTube uh, and also LinkedIn if you're watching. If you want to ask a question you can do. Uh, if you just put a question into the YouTube comments it will come straight through to me. Uh, for those of you in our live streaming room uh, you will notice that on the right hand side there's a small Q&A tab. Uh, so if you tap that then you can ask a question and we've also got Victor and Helen helping out as well. So between the three of us we should be able to cover most of what you asked today. <coughs> the only other challenge is that despite um, avoiding catching colds for the past uh, winter, one finally got me. So if I lose my voice by the end of it, sorry about that, but we shall get there. Today is relatively short anyway, it won't be um, a full hour. So what we're going to look at is the basic tab of our color editor and also the advanced tab. Uh, which gives you a few more options. The skin tone tab we're going to leave for today. Uh, that's going to be covered in a future live stream, um, which is going to be held by Alex, where we talk about portraits and skin tone and so on. So hold that thought and you can sign up for that one. And we'll put the link up at, at some point so you can grab that. So first of all, let's cover the basic tool tab, which I think you'll agree is probably pretty easy to understand just if you looked at it. But there are a couple of handy things in there that you might not realize um, and a couple of different ways to use it as well. So first of all, you can probably guess what happens. We've got seven, I say seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight color swatches, <laughs> always get that wrong, and an all colors swatch. Uh, which has a couple of handy uses. And simply by clicking on the color swatch, you then have the ability to moderate the hue, saturation, and lightness. Usefully, when you click on the various different color patches, you'll see those three color bars change, which indicate what's gonna happen when you push the slider to the left or the right. So for hue, you can see here, essentially what we're doing is that, um, so we've got our oranges, essentially what we're doing is pushing this color towards its neighbor, so closer to the reds, if I go to the left. So the oranges will get redder and so forth. So you can see that happening in our usual contrived picture that we use for uh, color kind of demonstrations is something which has piles of color. We'll also have a look at this uh, scary table at some point as well. And if we go in the other direction, it's pushing it towards its neighbor on the right hand side. But these color bars here give you a really good indication of what the slider is gonna do. Same for saturation and same for lightness. Um, so just a little word of warning with saturation. So let's just pick something which is already pretty saturated, like our yellow crayon. So saturation will boost the saturation. So if I go really uh, super crazy, you can see the difference it's having in the yellows like so. Now that crayon isn't quite saturated, but let's just go back to this one again and push the saturation up. So we can go to a maximum of 80. When we come to the advanced color tab, we can actually go greater to 200, I think it is. Um, and that point, things are getting a little bit out of control. So the basic tab does have some limits on it, which the advanced tab doesn't. So there's a little bit of hand holding there, so you don't go completely over the edge, but 80 should be more than enough for anyone. So manually color picking the color swatches works, or, if you're not sure which color swatch to pick, you can grab this little picker here, click on the color that you want to edit, like so, and then Capture One will show you the dominant color in that area. <clears throat> and I say dominant because sometimes if it's, you know, crossing the path between a couple of different color ranges to get the best adjustment on your picked color, you might have to manipulate a color, couple of color ranges. Um, and we've got a really handy way to do that as well. But when you click, it will show you the dominant color. So extremely simple to understand. I hope you would uh, uh, would agree. So hue changes the color, saturation boost or reduce the saturation, lightness make it brighter or darker, not particular rocket science. 
Now there's handy uses for the all color swatch here. Now notice that when we choose that, lightness is grayed out. Um, mostly because we've got other tools in the application which are probably better suited, like exposure, brightness, curves, levels, and so on, to name a few. So here we can just adjust hue and saturation. Why would you want to do that? So if we just go and pick uh, something else, where is the image I was looking for? Yeah, let's grab this one. Uh, let's reset it to reset everything except the composition. Uh, so let's say we wanted to desaturate some areas but keep some areas at their normal saturation. So what we can do is if we grab the all colors swatch like so and take the saturation down, if I then grab my picker and let's just say click here and then pull that saturation back up, then we get that effect. So it does have uh, a handy use. Um, let's just go back to our um, color chart here before we segue into the direct color editor because the issue with what I've just done, so I got ahead of myself there, the issue with what I've just done is that when we clicked in our shell here, we're just uh, adjusting this color patch. And because of all the things on there, there might be a bit of a makeup of different color tones. So it might be nice to have a fast way to select more than just one patch, which we do. So first of all, let's just have a little look at this color table and we look at this in the advanced color tab as well. But just to show you what I mean about the hue, if I pick on the, uh, let's go for the reds as an example. And you see here how the, the uh, slider has changed to pink. So I chose the red. So if I move it in this direction, you see the reds get pinker like so. If we go in this direction, they actually start to bleed into their neighbor as well. If we go over here and grab our pinks, because this is like a technically a, a, a color wheel, which you'll see in the advanced tab, but this is a continuous loop. So even though we've represented this, you know, in a flat field, uh, if I grab my pinks and then I push it in this direction, you see they actually start to go redder because we're pushing it to the right, which is this guy over here, and the opposite if I go in that direction. Saturation, you can of course see what's happening, and then lightness, brighter, darker. So essentially you're grabbing a slice of that color chart and then manipulating it, pushing the hue left or right, if you want to think of it like that, or making it brighter and darker. Okay, let's go back to this guy. <clears throat> I'm muting myself when the occasional cough comes up so that you don't have to listen to it. Uh, just checking on questions. Um, so far, so good. It's all right. So what I said here, let's just recap what I did. So we took the all colors swatch, we reduced saturation, I picked in the shell, and then we bumped that saturation back up. So so we've got a desaturated background and our subjects we've saturated back up again. However, as I said, the color makeup in here might be a little bit different. Um, so there's something called the direct color editor, which will help you achieve this a little bit quicker. So instead of, let's just bring up the overhead cam. So when I grab my color picker, what happens is if I click, let's just click here for a second. Um, like so, you'll see a little four-way cursor pop up. I know it's a little bit hard to see, so if I click here, you might be able to see it. Now on my screen, after two or three seconds, it disappears. But because of the way the screen sharing is working in my live streaming app, you can still see the cursor, which is actually quite handy, because for me it disappears. So what you'll see happen, look at the color editor. So if I click here and click and hold, then we've actually selected two color patches at the same time, which is a better makeup of what I've, um, of, of the color tones that we want to edit inside this shell. So now you can just see my pen here at the top. If I go this way, if I drag to the right, you'll see the hue change. And we're adjusting both color patches at the same time. If I go up and down, then you'll see the saturation go up. So I'll push it to something ludicrous so you can see. If I drag my pen back down, then you'll see the saturation go down like so. So this is a really fast way of targeting more than one color patch at the same time. And also avoids you having to 
drag a bunch of sliders about. Now we've got hue, saturation and lightness. So hue was left and right, saturation up and down. If I hold down my option key, then I've got lightness. So now I can manipulate the lightness, that third axis. Let go, and then we've done our adjustment like so. So pretty neat. So if I pull that saturation down and then go back here, click and hold, and then I can make my saturation stronger like so. Now this works great because you can just click on any colors and just adjust them quickly. So let's just go here, reset that. So if I click and hold on the shirt and then I wanna make that a little bit more saturated, I can boost up. Uh, if I wanna change the lightness, hold down option and then make that a little bit darker and richer. And then hue, we could push to the left like so. And you can just keep clicking on you know various different color tones in the shot. So if we had go back to our crayon friends here so if we click here so straight away more saturated less saturated more saturated darker and so on so it's a really nice fast way of zooming around and editing color so that pretty much shows us what we can do in the basic tab now to go advanced gives you a few more options but before we do that this is if you start to get interested in uh, this option here, edit color ranges, this is the point where you need to think about going advanced. Because if you start messing around with uh, editing color ranges, you're kind of sneaking into the uh, advanced territory. Before I do that, just forgot something. So if you want to change the direction that the direct color editor is working in, click on this little line here, and then you see hue does horizontal, saturation vertical, lightness, alt and horizontal, but you can choose exactly what you want to do depending on what your preference is. The sensitivity is how much, um, <coughs> excuse me, movement you want of your mouse and pen to move the slider. So if the sensitivity is high, you only need to move it a little bit. If the sensitivity is low, then you need to move it a lot uh, to get that slider movement, okay? All right, what I was saying was regarding the ranges, if I click on this, if you click into the wheels, you can see exactly which colors are gonna be affected as you go around. Now you can adjust the boundaries. So you'll see here, this guy down here, if we start tweaking the boundaries, you can see it's not included anymore, now it is included. So if you're starting to think, oh, I just wish I could tweak the boundary a little bit, etc., etc you're moving into the advanced color editor. But if you do play around with these, keep in mind that when you adjust one boundary, you're also affecting its neighbor, which might be undesirable. And if you get in a muddle, just hit reset to default and you're back to where you were. But if you start doing that, you're kind of getting into advanced territory. So we have a look at what's going on there. Uh, Timo says, how to make gold or silver colors? Uh, well, gold gold is a tricky color, actually, to represent. Um, so if, uh, if you've got gold in the first place, then hopefully the camera will represent that faithfully. Um, but, you know, if the color's a bit off, the hue slider is what you want to use. Like if it's too orange, as an example, you want to pull it away from the reds to get it more into the yellows, as an example. Um, but you can't use the color editor to make a color. You're manipulating, you know, what is there already. All right, so now the advanced color editor. So let's bring this guy back up. So what does the advanced color editor bring to the table? Quite a few different things, actually. The primary advantage is that it gives you control of the range of colors that you want to pick and also which you can't do in the basic color editor, the saturation range. So let's grab our picker. Let's just go, where should we go? Let's go over here like so. So straight away, as soon as I click, Capture One shows you a suggested color range that we're gonna edit. And this little dot that shows here, this is the exact color tone that I picked. Where was I? I can't remember, so around there, yeah like so. Uh, if I was to pick up here, then you see the, see it's a little bit different. So let's go right in the middle there. So the dot is the exact color I picked. 
the boundary is the range of colors I'm gonna pick. And those boundaries can be adjusted. So if we turn on this option, view selected color range, everything will go to monochrome, which is not part of the selection. So that's why this color table is, is handy because you can see exactly what's going on. Now the additional control, which we don't have in the basic, is the saturation range, which is in this plane. So you'll see if I cut out the lower saturated colors from the center of the wheel, then my selection gets smaller. Uh, if I just move this dot for a minute, which moving this dot has no effect, essentially. It's just showing me the picked color. If I cut out the more saturated, you can see we lose the range in the more saturated colors, like so. So very easily you can manipulate anything from a tiny range of colors to a much broader range, like so without you know affecting any neighbors like you would be doing in the basic color editor so even if we do something like this we could select all the most saturated colors in the entire color spectrum or we could select all the most desaturated colors in the entire color spectrum like so so it's not only just for taking, you know, very narrow slices of colors. You can take a big slice, you can take a little slice, you can do exactly what you want. And actually see, as we walk this around the wheel, like so, you'll be just going through the color spectrum. Pretty nice, huh? So it's, uh, uh, you know, way more flexible than the, the basic color editor. Fernando says, what does the point inside the color wheel do? For the advanced color editor, it's only an indicator. So it only tells you where you clicked. So if I reset this and click here, it's telling me the exact color tone that I picked, but moving it around doesn't do anything. What it does prevent you doing, so if I click here once more, is if I'm adjusting, it stops me going past. I can't drag the boundary past my picked color. So it's just kind of protects you taking that out of the adjustment. So that's all it does. In the skin tone tab, it does actually have a purpose, but in the advanced tab, all it does is stop you going past your picked color, but moving it around makes no difference, but it, it's just an indicator. Um, let's just reset that once more. And the last thing we have to talk about is smoothness here. So let's view selected color range once more, cut this down to you know a little wedge like so, and we zoom in a bit. So there's my color adjustment like so. Now notice around the boundary, we've kind of got this fuzzy halo. So that relates to the smoothness slider. So that controls the fall off or the roll off into neighboring colors. Because if you have a very hard roll off, then you start to get posterization. And I'll show you an example in a second. But if we pull smoothness down, you see we get, you know, like a really hard edge on our color selection. If we bring the smoothness right up, then it's rolling off and bleeding uh, into the surrounding colors. Now, typically, you only need to very rarely tweak this. But there's a danger of always doing that and trying to have very finite color selections because you can end up with some missing bits. So if we go back to our friendly crayons here a second, uh, and we pick on our yellow crayon like so. And if we view selected color range, you can see our color range. And we might think, actually, I don't want the desk to be affected. That's lower saturation, so I can cut that out. Let's just bring this out. And I can probably come away from the greens and I can come away from the reds because you see the desk has got quite a bit of red component in it when I do that. If I pull it away in this direction, then we've got a pretty nice color selection. Um, so don't automatically start crushing everything to, towards the dot, because what you might find happens if we do this, because as it rolls off into the darker areas, it's more saturated. So we're actually then chopping off some of that color, which we wouldn't want to do if we just wanted to edit quite nicely our yellows like so. So now we've got that. 
we're then happy to mess around with our color however we wanted to do it. Whoops, like so. Now here, saturation, remember in the basic tab, I said it has, has a limit, which was 80. So in the advanced tab, there's much less hand-holding and you can go completely berserk and go up to 200, which sometimes will look, you know, absolutely horrific. Uh, so you don't want to do that. So if I um, make another pick, which will lead us on to our second advantage and go crazy, you can see that starts to look pretty nasty. We've actually gone out of, you know, the realms of usability. If you look at the RGB values, we've got zero green and zero blue. That's just, you know, looks horrible. So just do be a little bit more mindful that there's less um, hand-holding uh, on the advanced tab. That was definitely a case for muting them, but rather than sneeze and blow your eardrums out, <laughs> I thought I'd catch it first. Okay, that um, leads us to the second advantage, which is multiple picks. So you see, I've got two picks going on. We've got this one and this one, and you can have up to uh, 25, whereas before we were limited to eight. So 25. Um, to give you a couple of other examples where squeezing down the um, color range is it advantageous. And I'll also show you where it doesn't work and it's kind of a waste of time, which leads us to Massi Massimiliano's question. Got there in the end. Does the color editor act on the image layer or can you use a mask? You can definitely use a mask, which is sometimes a lot quicker than playing around with uh, boundaries, which we'll look at in a second. But if we take this pupper here as an example, I picked this not for any you know photographic award winning, but it, it's quite a good example because the coat is golden, the boots, I uh, don't know why the dog's wearing boots, but anyway. So if we click here, then straight away we've got the color range suggestion from Capture One. If we turn on view selected color range, you can see everything which will go to monochrome, which is not part of that color. And it's picked up quite a bit, the coat, a bit, the pavement and so on. But if we say, let's lose the lower saturated tones, and we might have to move that up a bit. If we turn on view selected color range, sorry, then you can see, okay, we can kill that, but I can retain you know, the actual color that I want to edit, turn that back on, and then go ahead and do your color tweaks, etc. What you can't do, of course, which leads to your question, Massimiliano, is that, you know, we're working on the image layer. So if we turn on view selected color range, of course, up here, we've got an identical color on the collar and so on. So all of those things are all gonna be affected unless you start going ahead and using masks, which we'll look at in a second. Uh, often, as I said, that would be, you know, way, way quicker. We've also got, let's um, reset this. We've also got the same functionality, which you might not have realized. Um, is that reset? Yes. So if we hit the plus button down here, you will get nothing for some reason. There we go. If you hit the plus button down here, you get this. You might wonder what on earth is, is this, but it's essentially the same as that in the basic tab. So if we uh, do the same thing again, we can desaturate everything like so. Um, but it also has greater limit on plus, so you can go completely berserk if you wish. You can also adjust the entire hue of the spectrum, but I'm not entirely sure of the use case of that, if I'm completely honest. I haven't come across a situation where I would need it. So if I say plus and adjust the hue, you'll see everything kind of move in one direction or another. So how I would use that on an image, I don't know. If you've got any bright ideas, then please let us know in the chat. But you can use it for the same thing like we did um, in, in the uh, basic tool. So if I desaturate everything like so, grab my picker, uh, pick on the building or the sky, whatever, doesn't matter, and then go the opposite of that. So it, it has a purpose, but I'm not sure how I would use the hue purpose. It does also have a lightness slider here but it's a little bit clunky, I would say. If you want to adjust density, I would use a proper tool like brightness exposure and so on and so forth. Now you might have noticed we've got some handy little shortcut buttons down here as well. What do those do? So 
they are exactly that shortcut button. So if we take this shot as an example, so if I click on the background, like so, we've got quite a small color range that Capture One has selected. And the thought process behind this is that we are trying, or Capture One is trying to give you what it thinks is the best range selection on the first click. Because let's say we wanted to adjust this background a little bit. So my thought process would be grab the picker, click on the background, and let's say we want to make it a touch darker and a bit more saturated. Great, super nice fast adjustment. Now what if I wanted to think, well actually I wanna make sure, I wanna really make sure I'm adjusting all the colors in the entire saturation range, and that's exactly what this shortcut button does. But for this image, I wouldn't use it, and you'll see why. So look at our, I guess, lychee, I suppose, and then the middle of the flower there. So if I say span saturation range, then straight away, those two also get affected because they are actually belonging somewhere up here. If I actually click on this guy, see it's just over here, so compared to that one. So if we'd spanned our full saturation range, it's just kind of nicking the edge of it. So in this situation, we actually don't want it to attach into it like so. But if you're clicking on a color and you think, I wanna make sure I've covered everything, I don't know, like in this suit jacket, so if I click in the middle, I can say, well, there's nothing else in this image that is remotely close to that. So just to be sure, I'm gonna span the entire saturation range. So when I give it a little tweak, I wanna make sure I'm catching everything because on you know, a fabric like this, where we're just rolling off into the highlights or going into the shadows. This will be a lower saturation, this will be higher. So I just wanna make sure I catch all. But in a situation like this, I'm actually trusting that Capture One has picked a really nice default range for me, like so. Because the full range grabs too much. So don't think as soon as you uh, make a pick, you have to start going along and adjusting the range and looking at view selected color range, a lot of the time it works out perfectly. Um, next, we will move on to later. I am just gonna check for That's a good one. Uh, can the advanced color editor be used to turn a color image into black and white in a more controlled way than the black and white tool? I guess you could, because you could pick individual channels and vary the saturation. Um, I haven't actually tried it myself, because we could, I guess, mess around with, yeah, it might be a nice way to do it, actually. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't tried it enough myself to, to see how it actually works, but whether it's actually better than the um, black and white tool, I don't know, because you might have to do a lot of picking and then you're gonna end up with, this is where I wanna spam my full saturation range and then try, I don't know. I don't know if you'd end up doing a lot of messing around to get a result that probably wasn't better than the black and white tool, but you can certainly, I would say, convert to black and white. So if we go to, uh, where is my black and white tool? So if we enable black and white, you can still use the color editor because the underlying image is in color. So if I pick on our bananas here, I'm still gonna get my color wheel pick and I can still tweak them like so, but that's probably not a, lift, not a lot different to doing that. So I don't know, I think that would be a playground experimental thing to see if that actually gave you something more. I'm probably inclined to think, no, it doesn't. Okay, layers. So let's uh, look at what we can do here. So I've spoiled it by seeing, um, showing you what we did this morning. Uh, color editor, get in there, thank you. So sometimes, as I said earlier, it's not worth the hassle of playing around with color ranges if there's no hope of isolating a color. And this is almost a perfect example because if I click on the dress here like so, you can see exactly the color tone I've picked. If I pick on the wall in the background, 
almost identical. So if, for example, we're wanting to tweak the hue of the dress or the background or whatever, no amount of careful controlling and manipulation of the color, color range is going to make any difference because they are the same color. But what we can do in this case is let's just grab an AI brush and pick the wall as an example. So that's my mask on the background. Now I can grab my color picker, pick on the wall, and then let's go make it pinky like so. So a couple of simple clicks like that. Jobs are good in, no problem whatsoever. So yes, often a lot quicker to just play around using a layer instead of painstakingly adjusting that. Now what I would do here, I would probably just expand full range just to make sure I got all the, the bits and pieces. Um, and then if we didn't want any part of that, if I just grab my uh, eraser, my normal non-AI, non-fancy eraser, and we got rid of uh, this part, like so. You'll see, or this part over here, you know, you can happily just edit a color range within part of a mask. So very simple. Um, that was an AI mask. Doesn't have to be if we just did something super sloppy, like, uh, let's just delete that. So if I grab my brush, normal brush, maximum flow and so on, and just did, you know, this kind of thing, not pretty or tidy at all, clicked in the adjustment there, and then I would be pretty sure of just adjusting that without affecting, you know, any other similar colors in the image. If we grab our eraser again, oops, like so, then you can see know the difference or if I grab the brush and brush over here then I can brush that adjustment in elsewhere so yes absolutely much much easier to use a, um, a mask if there's any tricky crossover same goes for this particular shot let's just reset the layers what of course is likely to happen here if I click on the sweater and look at view selected color range. So everything is monochrome, which is not part of the range. You see, I've pretty much got the skin tone as well. I could probably get rid of some of it, but you'll see here, if you look along the jawline, we've still actually got a little bit of the um, color selection. So I could mess around with this for ages, or I could probably much quicker grab an AI brush, uh, mask around the sweater like so, which gives me that. Oh, there's a little bit of um, bleed off on the chin, but I could just erase that out. Easy peasy. And then use my color editor, click once, and then I can exactly do what I want to do without messing up the skin tones. So yeah, combination of color editor and a mask at the same time is super, super powerful. All right, that's nearly us done. Last thing to mention in the advanced tool is this. So let's go back to the pinks for a second because that's more obvious. So you can see this is your selected color and this is how it looks after your adjustment. These are the RGB values before and after and the hue saturation brightness values before and after. Now there's nothing you can do with them. You can't click in there and punch in different values, which would be super cool actually, but that's not possible. Um, it just gives you a readout of the before and the after. Plus and minus allows you to add other color picks, but using the picker equally does the same thing. So it just allows you to pick and add different ones. Turning the check mark on and off allows you to see the before and after difference. And as I said, you can have up to 25 of that. So yeah, that's the advanced color editor. But basic is maybe an un unkind word for basic. It achieves a great deal. You can still use that with layers as well. So you've still got the same flexibility. But advanced gives you that additional ability of that saturation range tweak and the ability to have very narrow color ranges or much wider 
color ranges like so see that one actually sneaks over here and has a double bubble effect on that so advanced color editor gives you those distinct advantages 25 picks instead of the eight no hand holding on saturation so be careful don't go crazy um, and these little clever tools like expanding the selected color range inverting sorry and spanning the entire saturation range fantastic um, that's pretty much it let's just check uh, for questions uh, Alan said still no easy way to combine color with black and white well I think that the suggestion I made you know earlier so if we wanted to um, desaturate everything so if I hit on plus desaturate click on the dress and then boost that one up then we get those colors back obviously I could mask that if we didn't want the background but that would be my suggestion if you want to make something color pop in a black and white image that's uh, the by far the best way to, to do it so that's that one uh, can I create a mask from a color yes uh, you can as well um, what should we use to show that I mean it's a it's a function that I use less now because the AI mask is kind of almost taken over that really but if I pick my sky turn on view selected color range that's what we've got in the little three dots up here we can say create mask layer from selection so that means color selection so let's just span the full range so this color selection gets transformed into a mask and a layer is created so let's do that And what you'll see is color range mask is created. If I press M on my keyboard, you can see the mask like so. So it's pretty nice. The only thing I would check is that sometimes the edges can be a little bit on the crunchy side. So what I would do is hit the refine button and just let, see if you can improve the edges. So see with no refinement, it's a little bit on the crunchy side. If I put refinement up, it just takes the edge off those edges a little bit. So I would do that. And then now I've got my mask like so. What will be interesting to see, so we could you know, adjust at will. What would be interesting to see is in this situation, would an AI mask do better? So let's choose that and then see what it, it will pick. So like, you know, loads of different tools for different jobs. So if I click once, see what mask gets created so that's the ai mask that's the color range mask so actually in this situation the color range mask does a nice job like so so it's just another tool that you can use that might be more appropriate in some situations uh, if we take our taxi cab as an example if we click on our taxi uh, span that range this is where we might have to modify it a little bit because if we say create mask layer from selection we get that so we've got you know a lot more mess and other stuff going on when perhaps i just wanted to select the taxi cab so that's a little bit on the messy side what we, we could probably do is tweak our color range down a bit to that probably let's try that and say create mask layer from selection so now we've got that so what I would do now is I'd have to do a little bit of clean up with my eraser or whatever to give myself a usable mask like so. So then I would have my mask, but it, remember it's color range. It's not an object. Whereas the AI mask, let's actually see what it does in this situation. One click gives us that. So in this case, color range is not really a great solution. AI mask is a brilliant solution but you've got you know the choice of, of uh, two different tools so pick the one that works essentially but you've got that choice all right let's tell you what's coming up so I mentioned uh, earlier that we've got a live stream about portrait editing which will give us a chance to talk about the skin tone tab so Alex is going to take that one if you go to that bit link c1 underscore live streams it will take you to our live streams page 
or you can scan the QR code with your phone if it is in hand. If you hit the follow button up in the top right when you're signed in, uh, you will always get an email notification when something new goes up. If you remember quite a few months back now, it's taken us a while to, taken me a while uh, to get uh, Zoe back because if you remember, we had internet issues when Zoe was here. So Zoe is back in April as well. That one is up there. So God willing, uh, we've got decent internet this time and we'll be able to, to actually get Zoe, Zoe on as well. Excellent. Uh, final couple of questions and then I will let you head off on your Easter breaks. Uh, Anthony said, what version of Capture One am I using? This is 16.3.6. There is actually a 16.3.7, which had some additional camera support, but I obviously haven't updated yet. So 16.3.7 uh, is the latest. Uh, Joe says, can you change clothes from one color to another? You can. Um, <coughs> you might have to do like a few different picks. So if we click on the shirt and then we tweak the hue and again, and we tweak the hue and again, and we tweak the hue and again, we can kind of walk it all the way around uh, the circle, to be honest, and keep messing about with it. Um, let's turn off you selected color range. Sorry, I thought, why isn't it working? Let's do that once more. So click the shirt, tweak the hue and again, and again, and then we can make our way around uh, the color wheel essentially like so um, you can also do a trick with the skin tone tab but I'll let Alex reveal that one but yes you can change the color of, of something um, you just might need a few more picks all right um, also in a live streaming room uh, the link for the live stream coming up is uh, posted so support.capture1.com uh, and that particular link. But as I said, if you just go to that page, then you'll see all the future live streams which you can sign up for. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, I hope that was useful. Sorry for the muting and uh, the coughing. That's just the way it goes somewhere. It got me in the end. So I'd managed to avoid it all winter, but it found me. But there we go. Uh, enjoy your Easter weekends uh, when it comes. And uh, yeah, uh, have a great rest of week next week and see you soon. Take care. Bye now.